The British Grand Prix is over, and yes, Max Verstappen won again. However, the race at Silverstone was one of the most interesting races of the year, as we saw a completely new running order with a team that was the second fastest for the first time in probably 11 years. Now, let's get to the video. As usual, I'll be talking about Ferrari, Aston Martin, Mercedes and Red Bull a little bit later on, so stick around for that. As mentioned, the British Grand Prix was one of the most interesting races of the year because there was a true shaking up of the order, but was that track specific or are we going to see something similar as the races go on? Well, straight away I believe it was track specific and we're not going to see the same thing at Budapest for example. The layout at Budapest is completely different and requires different characteristics of the car to get a good lap time. But that being said, one of the things that will be similar is the new stronger spec of tyres that Pirelli introduced at Silverstone as that will be carried forward for the rest of the season and it will be interesting to see if these new tyres have added to a potential shaking up of the order. Speaking of tyres from Silverstone, there was a total of 23 pit stops as the vast majority of teams and drivers were able to make the one stop work as I kind of predicted going into the race. A couple of drivers did two stop and that was more down to the safety car which occurred later on in the race. In terms of on track rating, there was a grand total of 26 overtakes on track which is down from last year's 31, but that being said, there was still a very interesting race, and the fastest lap of the race was a 130.275 by Max Verstappen, which was ever so slightly faster than last year's fastest lap by Lewis Hamilton. So the question is, what teams were looking good, and what teams were not looking so good in the race? Well, one team that did not look good was Alpha Tauri, and it seems like sadly for Nick De Vries, this is the end of the road for him in Formula 1, as sadly for him, he has lost his drive to the returning Daniel Ricciardo, and frankly, it is not a huge surprise to see this, as yes, the car has not been great, but Sonoda has been on the fringes of points multiple times, and has actually scored points, whereas Nick De Vries did not feel like he was ever close to doing that. And when you look at this graph provided by Formula Data Analysis, you can see that sadly Nick was the slowest driver overall in the race. When you compare his lap times and pace to Bottas and his teammate Yuki Tsunoda, you can see that actually this was not his worst race of the year, especially during the early phase of the stints. However, as stint one goes on, you can see that his pace does start to dwindle when compared to Bottas and Sonoda. And then during the final stint of the race, when everyone was pushing a lot harder after the safety car, you can see this is where De Vries sadly lost out the most. For Alfa Tauri, taking Ricardo means that they now have a very experienced driver who can help them out with regards to where they are losing out in terms of pace. But also, I have a feeling that Ricardo's appointment is a warning shot to Sergio Perez. More on why a little bit later on. McLaren have had an ultimate turnaround so far in 2023. At the beginning of the year, they were the slowest car in the entire field, and for the first two races, it seemed like points were going to be impossible to come by. But in Silverstone, both Norris and Piastri had upgraded cars, and we saw the team leap up to be the second fastest car in the entire field. And well, when you take out Max Verstappen, they were the fastest car. I brought up the lap times from Russell, Leclerc and Norris, and what can we see from this graph? Well, what we can see is that McLaren has unbelievable pace, not only on the mediums during the early part of the stint, but also on the hard tyres towards the end of the race. During this portion of the race, I remember being a bit confused why McLaren went for hard tyres, given it was not working for other teams. But McLaren was one of the few teams that was able to make the hard tyres work, as you can see here on the hard tyres, McLaren were faster than pretty much everyone else. And towards the end of the race, you could see McLaren were closing the gap to Verstappen ahead. For McLaren, this is a major step forward as it seems like their high speed downforce has drastically improved from the start of the year. But next time in Budapest, it will be a different challenge altogether. And if McLaren can perform there as well, then there is no reason why we cannot start to involve them in the fight at the front of the field with Mercedes, Ferrari and Aston Martin. I just want to say if you are enjoying the video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you tap the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I will be releasing my preview and predictions for the Hungarian Grand Prix this weekend, so make sure you are around for that. 
Now though, let's get to the top four teams and let's start with Ferrari. For Ferrari, the British Grand Prix was frankly a bit of a disaster for them as a team. Last time in Austria, they were the closest fight to Red Bull, and this weekend they finished behind a Williams and made some questionable strategy calls. All year long, I've been saying for Ferrari, when it comes to the harder compound of Pirelli tyres in the Pirelli range, they struggle for pace on those hard tyres, and once again it seems Ferrari had no pace on the hardest tyre in the Pirelli range. When Leclerc boxed for those hard tyres, his pace was actually pretty much exactly the same as it was on the medium tyre that had just come off. As for signs, when he went onto hards, things were looking a little bit more positive, but after the safety car came out and the race got back underway, signs were struggling with pace on those hard tyres, as you can see when we compare both the Ferrari drivers' lap times, but more shockingly for Ferrari when we compare Sainz to Norris and look specifically at the hard tyre stint, you can see just how much faster the McLaren was able to go on those hard tyres versus the Ferrari. For Ferrari, the next race at Budapest will need to be an improvement for them, otherwise instead of looking forward to Aston Martin, they may need to start looking over their shoulders to the McLaren team behind. For Aston Martin, the British Grand Prix was a difficult race weekend for them as a team. Alonso was seemingly off of the pace most of the weekend from where we have come to expect him so far this year. The Silverstone circuit was never going to suit the strengths of the Aston Martin due to how their car is, but it was a painful weekend which was saved by a safety car coming out at the right time giving Fernando multiple places. When we look at the pace of Norris, Russell and Alonso, we see just what I mean, that Alonso did not have the pace of the competition this weekend. Alonso was also coming under pressure from Alex Albon in the Williams, who also happened to have a brilliant weekend. Next time out at Budapest, it should be a much stronger weekend as that circuit suits their car nicely, with many slow, tight and twisty corners, which is exactly where the Aston Martin enjoys itself the most. For Mercedes, the British Grand Prix was a tale of two halves. Over one lap, Mercedes was really struggling, and if qualifying was fully dry, then there was a chance that Mercedes could have gone out in Q2, as opposed to making it all the way to the end. However, as I mentioned in my practice analysis video, Mercedes' race pace was pretty strong, and well, their actual race pace was strong as well when compared to qualifying and something that was surprising was their pace on softs as that was actually stronger than Red Bull. Remember of course these Mercedes laps are fuel corrected from the start of the race versus Red Bull at the end of the race, but this shows Mercedes had very good tyre wear as we have come to expect from them as a team. Russell had excellent race pace on the soft tyres and I think he surprised everyone. Unfortunately for George though, the safety car came out at a bad time for him, but it was perfect for his teammate Lewis Hamilton. But even so, Lewis, as this graph shows, had no answer for Norris at the end of the race, when Norris was on the hard compound of tyre versus Lewis on the softs. And finally for Red Bull, the British Grand Prix was another victory as Max Verstappen claimed yet another win, and Red Bull now tied McLaren for the most consecutive victories in Formula 1 history. But according to some in Red Bull, if the race was any longer, then McLaren, ironically, could have been the team that stopped Red Bull from equaling their record. But is there any truth to that fact? Well, I have brought up the lap times of Verstappen and Norris from the race to see if that is true. At the back end of the race, Max is on softs and Lando is, of course, on the hard tyres, as I've already mentioned. But could Lando have challenged Max if the race went another five laps or so? Honestly, I don't think there is any truth to that statement. You can see here, Max instantly pulls away after the safety car comes in, but then backs off to match Lando's pace. And on the last lap of the race, you can see Max has one last push lap and pulls away from Norris. Max, in my opinion, had it all in hands, and next time at Budapest, I fully expect Red Bull will break McLaren's record for most consecutive F1 victories. But what about Sergio Perez? Well, as I mentioned, Ricardo has taken De Vries' place at AlphaTauri, and I do believe that this is a warning shot for Sergio Perez, and a way for them to evaluate the pace of Daniel Ricardo. And why is this? Well, once again, Sergio Perez had a difficult weekend, 
And as you can see, when we compare the pace to Perez and Verstappen, once again, Perez is struggling for pace when compared to his teammates. And Perez is coming under increasing pressure, in my opinion, to potentially lose his seat at the end of the year. Now, I don't expect this to happen this year because he is still second in the Drivers' Championship and Red Bull do want a 1-2 in the Drivers' Championship. However, at the end of the year, if Ricardo does impress in Alpha Tauri, then I see no reason why Sergio Perez could lose his seat to Ricardo. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.